All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is a special um, edition of the Ankle Cast, uh, which is probably a waste of our time because nobody listens to the Ankle Cast except for you, lone listener who's listening now. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been a little while since I did an Ankle Cast. I'll have to admit, I had the uh, kit in my car ready to go to record it this morning and then I got into my car and I had an audiobook playing that I really enjoy I'm, I'm enjoying this book right now and I decided I didn't want to stop it I had to listen to the book instead and I figured eh, maybe I can work in an ankle cast when I finish this book before I start up the next one uh, but instead here I am in the parking lot of Target with none other than Rish outfield by my side to join me in this special Marvel team up version of the ankle cast. This is ankle cast slash outcast. It's the ankle outcast. It's it's onk outfield. <laughs> chanda chanda from down under. Uh, so here we are. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk face to face. <laughs> No, we're we're actually not face to face. We're facing forward, both of us, because we're sitting in my car. Um, but yeah, we're doing a, a special ankle cast for you. Um, what do I have to say since last time? What has happened? I can't even remember when last time was. I think it was like the twenty fifth of September. I think I looked the other day because I keep checking to see if you will put up a new ankle cast. Because for weeks you've said, "Oh, hey, I'm going to do another one," and I'll say this in that episode. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah, that's kind of the way I roll. That's that's the way the ankle cast works, man. And your many listener is disappointed that you haven't got new ankle casts up. So when it comes down to it, the person who's listening to us doing this show is you. <laughs> oh, that's sad. There, but you said there's somebody else that actually listens, right? Yeah, I think I think we may. I think there may be even as many as ten people. Okay, you're just getting arrogant now. There's not <laughs> ten people. Uh, so yeah, if I remember right, the last one that I did, I talked about the whole month that I was homeless and how awful that was and how finally I was no longer homeless. And now that seems like a distant memory because uh, it's been two, almost three months. Has it been? Not three, just two. You've been in your house for two months? Wow. Yeah, I think it's been two because it was right at the end of... Uh, August, like the 28th, I think, was when we moved in. And now it's almost Halloween, so that's two months. Okay, and when did you get this car? Uh, That was like three weeks after. I don't think, did I mention that in that show? I don't think I did, did I? I thought you had. I thought you were just talking about, I mean, you and I had a conversation where we talked about your car just constantly screwing you over. And But uh, the first time I went to your house to record was the day that you had gotten this car. Yeah, that's uh, something else that happened to me. While I was homeless, I got rear-ended in my old car. That happens to a lot of homeless people. Don't feel bad. <laughs> well, I mean, feel bad, but don't feel special. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Darn, I thought I finally had something that made me special. Um, but yeah, I got rear-ended by somebody. All it was was me pulling out of a parking lot. Um, I started to go, and then I went, oh, I don't think I'll make it. So I stopped, and the guy thought that I had continued to go. And so he pulled down into the spot, but I was still in the spot. And so he hit my car, going probably five miles an hour, that's my guess. Very slow uh, speed, and yet he still managed to dent the trunk lid and so when I took it in to get it uh, fixed, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to have to replace the trunk lid and we're going to have to do this and that. And it's going to be like $3,000. We're going to rear end you a second time. <laughs> and so the insurance looked at that and said, you know what? Your car's not worth $3,000. We'll just give you the money and you can get, get lost. And uh, so, yeah, we took that money and put it into a different car. So here I am in a new car. Um... And, uh, yeah, so new house, new car, that's, uh, the way things have changed, which is probably the reason why I had to beg for money so much now for, uh, to get a computer, because I no longer have any money to spare. 
after doing this stuff, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if that was a big mistake a year from now and be like, hey, guess what? I'm homeless again. I just got foreclosed on. Awesome, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'll try and be careful. Well, hey, the real reason I was pressuring you to do an ankle cast was because you had all these lofty goals. And that was, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one of your purposes for creating the ankle cast was to talk about your writing goals, to talk about the things that you were going to say in a public, sorry, the things you were going to do in a public forum so that there'd be a record out there and somebody could say, hey, you said you were going to do this. How's it going? We want you to succeed. Or we will harm your family if you don't succeed. You know, something like that. So that there was some kind of... I'm, I'm making hand gestures, but I, I, I don't it, know what the word is. I'm yeah, the hand gestures aren't really getting it across to the listener, unfortunately. Uh, but you could probably hear his jacket rustling when he did it. That's might mean something. But yeah, that, that kind of was what the idea was. It was like, here's my goals. Uh, bug me if I'm not fulfilling them and cheer me on in my attempt to fulfill them, please. Um, you know, the 10 people that, uh, or less that are <laughs> listening kind of is a small group of people so that maybe that's why the, uh, the peer pressure of it never, uh, appeared. Um, but yeah, that is kind of what I was after. Um, but yeah, it's interesting just recently uh, I had another birthday. And it's funny <laughs> because I don't like my birthdays anymore. I used to, you know, that was one of those things that you liked when you were younger. You look forward to it. And be like, yeah, it's going to be my birthday and I'm going to get presents. And I mean, at a certain point, like you get older and you don't really, I mean, you get presents, but not really. And you're also to the point where if you want or need something, you're going to get it. So a present it's hard to buy something for someone that's older like me, I guess. Because, yeah, if they need something or want something, they probably got it. Um, and so what do you get them that they're going to care about? So the presents become less of a big deal. You're just like, oh, yay. My kids will, like, buy me a candy bar or something for my birthday. <laughs> so that uh, is interesting. I mean, they, they they become less of a good thing the older you get. And then... Nowadays, it's just like a reminder that, you know, it's coming soon. Yes, your death is is inevitably closer. It makes me... It, it, every year now, I think of that They Might Be Giant song. And I actually usually post it every year right around my birthday on Facebook. There's the song that goes from They Might Be Giants where it says, You're older than you've ever been. And now you're even older. And now you're even older. And now you're even older. <laughs> and they just keep saying that over and over again. This day will soon be at an end, and now it's even sooner. And now it's even sooner. And now it's even sooner. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that that's just the way I feel these days when it gets to my birthday. But even worse is that I'm really close to one of those monumental birthdays. The, the over-the-hill birthday, you know. I'm still under the hill. I'm Mr. Underhill still. But very shortly, I will be Mr. Over-the-hill. Um, and this year I thought, okay, I've got one year left before I'm over the hill. So I'm going to get a bunch of goals and I'm going to achieve these goals before I'm over the hill. Okay, so you've got a year to achieve the following. <laughs> I, I I was working on them today, so I may not get them all right, unfortunately. Oh, no. Several of my goals, though. So a lot of my goals were to lose weight, for example, is one of them. Um, I want to get down to the ideal weight, the, the weight that I feel I should be at, instead of, you know, just somewhere. So... I actually set that up. I went through and even worked out, okay, I'll lose this much this month, this month, this month kind of a thing, and separated it out into 12-month little goals. 
where I'm losing like 10 pounds a month at first and then 5 pounds a month later. So that's one of them. Is that, and also running the marathon, which I meant to have done already. That was actually supposed to be one of my goals, and I talk about it all the time, my running, uh, you know, progress on this show. Did you run today? I didn't. I'm I was sorry. tired. I woke up and felt like crap this morning. I don't know what the deal was with that, but... Yeah, you my... had a birthday. <laughs> That's probably what it was. My back hurt, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. Yeah, screw it. You know, I had the same thing. I woke up about six or seven this morning because my back hurt, and I and you know how it is in the morning. You're just like, oh, I can't really think very well, but it's like something happened that I can't remember because I'm tired to, to hurt my back. And, and and but then when my alarm went off and I got up, it still hurt, and I started to think about it. Nothing happened to me. I didn't fall off of anything. I didn't lift anything really heavy. I'm just getting old. Yeah, it sucks. Isn't there a Ben Fold song where he sings it sucks getting old? Yes. What is that one? Is it the... Not it sucks to be the man, though. That's a different one. Stan the... Steel fighting is the song. Oh, okay. Everyone knows it sucks to grow up. Ah, but everybody does. Up. Um, so anyways, yeah, uh, so that's, those are two, my, my two, at least that I've made so far, my two physical fitness type goals this year, run a marathon this year, get down to ideal weight of 200 pounds, which is well below what I'm at now. So it will take me probably the entire year to get there and I will have to be good. And, uh, which means I won't be getting a shake when I go out to dinner with Rich Outfield anymore like I did today. I didn't drink a soda, though, so there's one bit of positive. That's, that's, a, oh, that's, I guess that counts as a fitness goal as well, sort of. The no because, soda. But yeah, that is my goal from this birthday to next birthday. No soda for one entire year. I'm going to see what that does to me. Wow. See, if, if, if a ridiculously ugly old woman came to me and said you could either be 300 pounds or never drink soda again, I would just like have to get much bigger clothes. It's one of the few joys that I have that I can count on every single time. It's like, oh, hey, it still tastes good. Big shock. Yeah. Uh, I, I like soda a lot, so we'll see... I'm going to try and do it for a year. See, this is something that actually I had a friend who challenged his kids to do that. And his kids actually did that for a year. I think they actually succeeded. I don't know. I didn't really keep close tabs on it. But I thought, you know, that's a good idea. Because I know that that's one of those vices. And I can always tell when I start getting really fat. Like right now, I am probably 10 pounds heavier than I have been for a while. And a lot of it comes from the fact that for the last month or so, I've been getting a soda like every morning on my way out the door. I'll go by the gas station or I'll go by the dollar store, actually. will sell you the 20-ounce bottles for a buck. And the gas station sells them for like a buck 69. So it's a big savings. So I go to the dollar store fairly often. <laughs> um... But yeah, I noticed that I get fat fast once I should really give in and start drinking soda as much as I would like to. Um, but at a certain point, you know, you drink enough of it and then you just drink it and you're like, oh, this is making me sick to my stomach. I need to stop. And I'm at that point. I'm, I'm beyond that point. So, yeah, I'm going to try and leave that completely behind. So I guess I can report. I, I'll, maybe I'll print out all these goals and tape them on my dashboard here so each time I do a new ankle cast I can say okay let's see goal number one I'm still good on that one that's the hard part with this this goal is that it's a all or nothing goal you know what I mean it's not like hey I'm gonna write so many words oh I didn't write yesterday but I'm, I, I'm gonna catch up you know I can't catch up and hey I drank soda yesterday but I'm gonna doubly not drink soda tomorrow you know, it's it's one of those things where they don't recommend you making goals like that because 
as soon as you fail once, it's all over and you're done. You're not going to try anymore. But anyways, I'm going to try it anyways. I don't care. Screw you people who say what to do because I'm doing what I want to do. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can think of the other goals. Um, oh gosh, I had like seven well, I of them. I think of two, but... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of trying to save those as the the big finale. But I had like seven of them, and I've only done three. And I can't think of what the other ones are. I wish I had it printed out or on my phone or something. Um, what well, what about your running? You you've been doing running in the mornings, or and you made a a, a count and a video for all the the miles that you've run. Have as is that part of your goal? Well, I, I am supposed to finish the my old goal. That my old goal was to run 500 miles this year, and I haven't quite made it yet. And I did do videos. Yeah, I did the video for the 100 mile session, and I did the videos for up to 250 miles. And my final video was going to be at 500 miles. Um, but I'm not there yet, and I will keep going to finish that. But that'll just be part of the training for the marathon. I think marathon is just my only running goal. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we could, we'll just move on to the two goals that I can remember, and maybe the other ones that I can't remember will pop up later. But uh, another goal that I made is a writing goal. And this uh, includes, I guess, two in one. My writing goal for the year is to write 300,000 words. Oh, see, that's new to me. I hadn't heard that. Which I hadn't told you yet, but that will include also, and I was going to try and work it out. Okay, I'm going to write 300,000 words, and that's going to be this many stories, right? And I was going to put a number of stories in there, but then I thought, I don't know if I want to say stories, because originally the goal was just going to be write 20 stories in the year. But then, you know, who knows how long a story, one story is going to be or another story is going to be. Um, so instead I just figured I'd pick a word count and that would be however many stories it turns out to be. Um, but that would be approximately like a thousand. I just tried to count it up. There's 365 days in a year. So if I did a thousand words a day and then there's going to be lots of days that I don't manage. So cut off, you know, 65 days worth and we'll just say 300,000 seems like a you know, a, a manageable amount. So that's what I'm going to go for. 300,000 words. Included in that is that this year I'm going to attempt to do the NaNoWriMo thing this November. This Movember. Have you heard about Movember? No. Do I want to know or am I going to be upset? It's not a big deal. It's You know how they have like Breast Cancer Awareness Month in uh, I think October? October. And so, like, all the football players are wearing, like, pink on their uniforms and crap like that. Well, Movember is for Men's Health Awareness Month. I don't know why. I don't quite get the Mo thing. But, uh, basically, you're supposed to grow a mustache in November as part of Movember. I've never heard this. <laughs> all men are supposed to grow mustaches? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously you don't have to if you don't want to, but, but it's, it's it's a way of saying I support men. <laughs> I guess I, I got a nice 1970s porno stash here to show how much I care about men. Yeah, it's 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 more like, you know, you wear pink so that people will go and get mammograms and find out whether they have breast cancer or not. It's, you know, Men, go to the doctor and make sure you don't have nut cancer or prostate cancer or whatever kind of a thing. Go get your physical and take care of yourself. Because I guess men are notoriously uh, won't go to the doctor until it's like way too late kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. So I think it's kind of a do your preventative care and grow a mustache. But anyways... <laughs> <laughs> the sidetrack back onto the regular track. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and do the uh, um, NaNoWriMo thing this year. Um, I figure I could probably handle it. I know for years I've said that 
November is tough because it's sweeps month. And so it's always a little crazy where I work. But it hasn't been that bad recently, and I think I'm going to give it a shot. Hopefully I can manage. Uh, I worked it out, because you, you, the deal with NaNoWriMo is you're supposed to do 50,000 words in a month. And I counted that up. And, well, I didn't count it up. Let's, <laughs> let's backtrack and say I divided that up. And it comes out to 1,666.666666. Adominus! Repeating ad infinitum. Uh, yeah, 1,666 words a day in November will get you to the 50,000 word mark. And I figured, okay, I've got a story that I've talked about a lot on this show... And I've spelled it all out and I said, here's my story and I'm going to write it. And then I didn't write it. And so now here's my chance. I've got it planned out. I know what it's going to be. I just need to do it. And so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try and write Sunny and Gray this November. I got a burp. So I'm going to let you talk for a second. All right. And so because I know big, um, and because of a lot of his negative attributes I share, I really encouraged him to talk about this and to announce it and to let people know, hey, I'm going to do NaNoWriMo. I encourage me. Because entropy is the natural state of the universe. And without somebody supporting you or encouraging you or threatening you, it's easy to just say, oh, you know, it's too big or I'm too tired or I'm, you know, I'm old or what's on TV or whatever the deal is. And for him to say, hey, I'm going to write this thing, which I know he has wanted to write for months now. Um, and due to various factors, I mean, homelessness being one of them, money problems being one of them, overtime, the, the amount of hours you worked, like the last couple months have been just insane to me. You haven't been able to write Sunny and Gray. But to just put it out there and say, hey, in the month of November, I am going to write this book. I'm going to write the whole damn thing from beginning to end. Hold me to it. To me, that's really commendable. That inspires me. That makes me want to jump on here and say, hey, I'm going to not kill for three days of the... Now, I, I don't know. One of the things that I find a real difficult thing not to do. And I just... I, uh, you know, I started my uh, own version of the ankle cast and I don't put out episodes very often. Um but, you know, in one of them, I was just driving like you do and concentrating a little bit on driving and concentrating a little bit on what I was saying. And I said, hey, I was thinking of this idea for a story. Con and concentrating a little bit on looking for uh, hitchhikers that you can run over on your way. It's yeah. Well, that's always there. <laughs> and uh, by the next day, whatever it was, I had completely forgotten that idea. It never went anywhere. But. Two months later, when I finally put that episode of The Rich Outcast on the air, somebody said, wow, what a great idea. Did you end up writing that? <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh, no. You know, but that's exactly why it's good to talk about our goals or our, our, our story ideas or whatever it is um, in a public forum instead of just to each other or to nobody, which is often my case. Anyway, so that's why I wanted you to say a long time in advance, hey, I'm going to do NaNoWriMo, you guys. I'm gearing up to do NaNoWriMo. I'm going to do it. Who's with me kind of thing. Unfortunately, it's not a long time in advance anymore. If I get this out tomorrow morning, that gives me like two days before uh, NaNoWriMo hits. But I can also put it on Facebook and I can put it on my blog and I can put it on the Doonstief blog and I can... You can tweet it. I can tweet it. I can, uh... I can make a shirt <laughs> that says, I'm doing NaNoWriMo, encourage me, and wear it around. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but I can do many things, so hopefully maybe the word will get out enough that people will hold me to it. I think with NaNoWriMo, there's also, you can like go to their website and like sign up and officially declare yourself and you can get on like their message boards and and stuff like that and somehow encourage 
each other. But what would happen is that we would end up spending all our time reading message board <laughs> posts or posting message board posts yeah. when we could be writing. I'd write 1,666 words of message board posts and then be like, oh, crap, I never got around to the story. Dang. Uh, but, yeah, so that's uh, my goal for this uh, year for writing no, is 300,000 words and um, NaNoWriMo. And then on top of that is a publishing goal. It's not really a writing goal uh, uh, because I don't have to write anything to do it. I think I've probably got eight stories. But my idea was uh, Rish has been getting onto this thing and doing it, and he's encouraging me to do it, and that is Smash Words, which is a place where you can go, you can self-publish your story, and if you do it right, if you format it all up for them, they will even publish it to Amazon and Barnes and & Nobles and Apple Store and all the places that you can get books from. A bunch of things that I've never even heard of, but apparently like Kobo, I think, is the name of one of them, and et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of them out there, I guess. Depending on what device you have, you go to a particular store to get your ebooks. And so they take your ebook, they format it, and they send it to all these things. And, and the cool thing is that they'll do it, you know, you only have to give them a file and they will turn it into whatever file the particular store uses. So a Kindle type file or a Nook type file or something, whatever else, different that the Sony e-reader uses or, or whatever. And so I'm actually halfway through the uh, little guide that tells you how to format your file correctly so you can get it to them, and they'll send it out. And, uh, yeah, my plan is to put out... I can't remember. Uh, that's what it was. I think what I decided was I was going to publish 15 stories this year by way of smash words. And then my other goal was to have eight stories of mine that we podcast this year. That's a lot, man. Yeah. I mean, have we done eight episodes of the Dune Steve this year? We're going to do more. Definitely this year because we've got all those triple word score shorties. If we don't do more, then we'll be doing them still in like 2016. Because I think there's 15 of them, was mm. it? Or 16? 15. 15. So we have to do more episodes this year. Um, and I was trying to work out actually a goal for working on the podcast too. Just I'm going to set aside this amount of time to edit on stories and get episodes put together. So that we don't go so long between episodes as we have. And we didn't even get one out in October. And we did, but we didn't. You know, I mean, we did the 13 nights of Halloween, which included two stories. But we didn't do a regular episode of the show. And I'd like to improve that in the coming year. Well, part of the... And this isn't me defending us, but it is. Part of the problem with the Doonstief is it's not just us that does it. With That gets my goat. Usually it's just you and me. And in this case, you got your wife and two of your kids to do kids' voices for your story. Um, but usually, for a Dune Steve episode, we have to depend on strangers. We have to depend on semi-friends. I mean, like people that we podcast with all the time to edit something or to give us music or to give us art or to give us their voice. And... All that stuff takes so much time and just depending on somebody else to get you the lines and then editing those lines into the work that you've already done. For some reason, it's way more work than just editing a conversation that you and I have, a 10 hour conversation that <laughs> you and I have. I mean, the, the 13 Nights of Halloween was so much work, but I didn't mind it because it's easier than doing one 
short story episode for the dynasty. Yeah, it it kind of is. That was that's see that's the reason why our show I think has fallen off as of late because that whole bit was kind of my assignment. My deal was wrangling the folks, getting the producers, getting the voices, getting the people all together and making sure that they get their stuff in by a certain time so we can get it all ready. And yeah, I've just, I don't know. I'm sure at least some of it is me slacking, me slacking off, being a slacker. Stop it. (laughs) But also you've got a really crappy computer and you've like the balloon episode. How many times did you edit that fudgin balloon episode? Three times, I would think. Yeah, it was a few times it took that uh, the the thing kept crashing on me, which was a little frustrating. But uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, some of it is me slacking. Some of it is just, you know, factors beyond my control making it uh, impossible. And, you know, it, it's just... <sighs> You gotta have some downtime, you know. What I mean, <laughs> when it's downtime time, you just gotta take that time and be down. Um, uh, so you know, they're just you know, I could have made it work if I'm just like, okay, well, now that I have downtime, I'm gonna do this work. Um, but yeah, I slacked instead, which I'm not gonna totally apologize for, but I am going to try and be better in this upcoming year. Um. I'm going to try and work on stuff more often. We'll have to see. I think I may have to sit down and actually try and schedule things out so that I have, this is the time that I'm going to write. This is the time that I'm going to work on the show. This is the time that I'm going to do this. Because if I don't do that, I don't think I'll achieve any of these goals. Uh, I might half-ass my way through some of them and maybe get close or partway there. But I don't think I'll achieve any of them unless I do some some more intense planning. Um, but you know that that shouldn't be too hard because there's lots of tools for that kind of stuff come built into my phone and whatnot. So I just need to take some time and actually get it all figured out. But yeah, so I think that makes at least six of my goals. I, there must have been a seventh one. I can't think of what it was though. But. Um, But yeah, that's kind of what, because yeah, unlike Sally from When Harry Met Sally, I'm going to be 40, but it's not eight years away anymore. It's really close. And I want to achieve something. You know, when I first moved away from California and I moved out here, and I remember, I think I I sent you an email because that was back when we still used to just email each other all the time. And it was when I was about to turn 30. And I was like, dude, I just turned 30. Holy crap, I'm 30. Okay. It's time to do something with my life. And I'm like, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to start writing. And by the time I'm 35, I'm going to write for a living. That's what I'm going to do. And <laughs> those that, that year came and went so fast that uh, I don't know where what happened and I didn't even come close to even trying to do any of that stuff but um, yeah time is is passing the road goes ever ever on and it's fleeting madness takes its toll but listen closely not for very much longer (laughs) I've got to keep control so, yeah, it's time for me to get, to do do something worthwhile while I still can. There's a lot of things that I want to do, um, and there's only so long before it's too late. So I've got to get going on it. They say that you got to write a million words to become a good writer. If I wrote 300,000 words in three years, I would be basically to a million words. So... I could be a I could be a writer for a living by the time I was forty five. <laughs> That's less than I could be even sooner than that forty two even. 
so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna try and do that that's uh my goals for this upcoming year and i'm gonna try and do ankle casts more often so that i can report on them because you know the ankle the whole point of the ankle cast was for it to be easy it is easy all i got to do is throw it in there convert it and send it and uh there's no editing involved so it's an easy thing to do. There's no excuse for me, really, to uh, be so slow other than uh, I'm a slacker. <laughs> Entropy is the natural state of the universe, though. I mean, we're all slackers. I, un unless you're somebody like Abby Hilton, um, they, I, who somehow has motivation like a, a mini sun within her, uh, the, then everybody falls short of their goals. Everybody says, I'd like to do X, Y, and Z. I almost did Y. But if you're listening to this, you can help. Ask Big how it's going. Ask Big how many words he's, he's done. Check smash words. Type in BD Anklevich and see what comes up and say, hey, I see that you put a story on there. I, I'm going to read it or I'm going to review it or... Uh, I, I don't know, just there's got to be some way to encourage and, and to motivate, to prompt, to, to just let people know that, hey, I know that you have this goal and I hope that you achieve it. That, that means a lot when you know that somebody cares whether you succeed or not. Yeah, so that would be awesome if you if you were really uh, willing to do that. I would love it. Um. It would help a lot. So, yeah, comment whatever you've got for me. I will accept it, and I will use it as motivation. Um, I think we've probably come to our, our conclusion here. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and say goodbye, but not for long. I'll be back again soon to tell you how NaNoWriMo is going. Don't say goodbye. Say good journey. Oh, um, yeah, that's a good idea. I probably should do that. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody. Good journey. Good journey to you, too, sir. By the power of Grace Cull. <laughs> See you later. Oh, shoot, we weren't recording. No!